Hi guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today I'm bringing you part one of a five-part series showing you how to build an electric bicycle battery, or just a lithium battery for anything you want to power. Now this first part of the five-part series is going to be all about how to design the battery and how to lay out your cells. So we'll start by talking about um, how you design the connections for your battery. Now a lithium battery consists of two different types of connections between the cells in the battery, and those are series connections and parallel connections. We'll start with parallel connections. Now the idea behind parallel connections is that you're taking all of the positive terminals of batteries or battery cells and connecting them together, and then you're taking all the negative, cell, uh, negative terminals of batteries or battery cells and connecting them together. So I'll show you an example. Uh, here I've got six uh, battery cells. These are Panasonic 18650B cells, and all of the positive terminals are connected together by this piece of nickel strip. And on the other side, all of the negative terminals are connected together. So while I have six cells here, where each of these are 3.4 amp hours, I've actually created basically one big cell, which is a 20.4 amp hour cell. You take the um, 3.4 amp hours of each cell and you multiply it by six cells to get 20.4. And that's how we've created this uh, simple parallel connection. Just connecting all the positive ends and all the negative ends. Now how does a series connection work? A series connection is sort of the opposite of a parallel connection. Instead of connecting um, the positive ends together and then the negative ends together, for a series connection, you actually take the positive end of one battery or battery cell and connect it to the negative end of the next battery or battery cell. So for example, here I've got two basically identical uh, small battery packs I've created here. Both of these are six cells uh, welded in parallel. So also on the second set, we've got all the positive and all the negative ends welded together. Now if I want to make a series connection, it's as simple as taking the positive end of this set and then connecting it to the negative end of the next set. Now what I've created is a series connection where I have six cells in parallel and then two cells in series. And so instead of being a uh, 3.7 volt pack, which was what this was, when I wire them in series, now I've created a uh, 7.4 volt pack. Um, now the important thing to note is that when you wire in series, you don't change the amp hours. So this is still a 20.4 amp hour battery that I've created here. I've just doubled the voltage. Now you could create uh, higher voltages by putting more sets of cells in series. This is only two sets, but if you wanted to make a 24 volt battery, put seven sets of cells in series, and that would get you um, a fully charged voltage of 29.4, I believe. Yeah, 3.7, 4.2 times uh, seven would get you 29.4 volts. Uh, it's popular to use 10 cells in series for 36 volts, 13 cells in series for 48 volts, and uh, what's becoming more common recently is using 14 cells in series for 52 volts in place of a 48 volt battery. Now you might notice that this is sort of an awkward arrangement. If we were to put many cells on top of each other like this, we'd get this really tall, very skinny battery. That'd be a little bit weird to fit into many bicycles. So what we do is instead of welding them in this configuration, we just take these cells and we fold them over. And we still make the same connection here, we just do it with sort of a folded over set of cells. And then you can take as many sets of cells and do the same folding to get as many cells as you need in series. I'll show you an example. Here I've got a uh, partially finished pack where I've, instead of six cells in parallel, I've got three cells in parallel. So this is actually 10 sets of three parallel cells. In each of these, here you've got the first set. I'll roll this over so you can see the other side. Here's the first set of cells. This is sort of cell group one. You can see that I've done a series connection between cell group one and cell group two. Then I've actually skipped the next connection here because cell group two and three are connected on the other side of the battery. So if you go back around, you see this connection is skipped. Then from cell group three to four, we've connected and you can see how it skips every other connection. That creates these series connections and ultimately this 36 volt battery. Now let's talk about battery cells for just a minute. Um, I showed you the 18650B cells here by Panasonic. These are 3.4 amp hours and they can handle up to, uh, I think, five amps for each cell, which means these are fairly low power cells, but they're high capacity. These came out a few years ago, so they're not really the latest technology, but they're a good economical choice. The, uh, the problem with these is that you generally have to use many in parallel because they can only handle five amps each. So by putting six in parallel, this pack can handle 30 amps. Um, this, this pack here is created with uh, Panasonic 18650PF cells. So these don't have as much capacity as the B cells. These only have 2.9 amp hours, but each one can handle up to 10 amps. 
So it's sort of a trade-off between power and capacity. Some other cells that I've often used, uh, these are sort of an oldie but a goodie. These are the uh, Samsung 26F cells. These are one of the most economic, uh, economical cells. They're really cheap, but they're basically, um, they're basically the cheapest good quality cells you can get. The best, uh, the best deal on a name brand. These only have 2.6 amp hours though, so they're not very high capacity. Um, Samsung 29E cells, these are another sort of oldie but goodie. These can handle a higher current um, and have a bit higher capacity. These are also 2.9 amp hour, uh, kind of like the Panasonic PF cells. Um, just a note, this cell, it looks like a Panasonic cell, you know, it looks like these cells, but uh, it's actually just a no-name cell. It doesn't have any brand on it. Um, it just says IMR18650 E22. So this is just sort of a, um, a generic cell. I tested these, they actually had about 2200 milliamp hours, 2.2 amp hours, um, but I don't know what, what their maximum discharge capacity is, and I wouldn't use these for an e-bike purpose. This I, I uh, ripped out of an old uh, e-bike pack. A lot of people take cells out of old um, e-bike batteries, out of old uh, laptop batteries, and you never really know what you're getting when you take cells out of an old pack if they aren't labeled. So I would not use these for an e-bike purpose, but they'd be good for other you know, small electronics projects. Um, and then lastly, I've got these uh, 18650GA cells by Sanyo, which was purchased by Panasonic. So some people call these Panasonic 18650GA cells. And these cells I really like. These uh, are high capacity, they're three and a half amp hours each, and they can handle up to 10 amps continuous. Now they get really hot when you bring them up to 10 amps, so I don't push them that high. But they, um, they are good for you know, higher power applications, but uh, you want to make sure you use enough in parallel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a 36 volt battery, and I'm going to put four of these in parallel. And that's going to give me um, four, uh, 14 amp hours, because these are 3.5 amp hours times four for four parallel batteries, giving me 14 amp hours. Now before I get into that layout, I just want to show you one other thing. This is a battery pack, it's an old pack that I took apart, and this was made using prismatic cells, or pouch cells. Um, and these cells, they're similar in uh, chemistry to 18650 cells, the only difference is the shape, the form factor. 18650s are also made out of these pouches, but they're just very thin pouches that are rolled up and put inside of a can. So these are another option. Uh, the problem is, it's hard to source these, uh, these cells by themselves. And it's hard to find good uh, name brand manufacturers because everyone's sort of in the 18650 game and a lot of these pouch cells are just sort of generics, you never know what you're going to get. So I recommend working with 18650 cells because you know you can get some quality cells. Alright, now let's move to the computer because I want to show you how I set up these cells and I usually do it on the computer. Now when I design my batteries on the computer, I like to do the layout in some kind of drawing program. You know, you can use uh, Photoshop, Paint, I'm using Pixelmator, which is just like a cheap Mac version of Photoshop, but um, anything works. What I like to do is I start by drawing out my circles for my cells. Here I've got my first group here, and my convention is always just to leave the circles empty, like white, if that's the negative end of the cell, and then for the positive end of the cells, like in the second group here, I'll make those red. And that just helps me when I'm looking at it when I print it out to very easily tell which end of the cell is which on the diagram. Now when it comes to laying out these cells, you can see how I've got these offset here. Um, this is known as offset packing. It's a little bit more efficient, but you can always do uh, what's called linear packing, which is basically lining these cells up this way. I like offset packing because it gives more surface for the hot glue to stick to, and uh, it makes your battery shorter. And since I'm trying to fit this battery into a case, I want this battery to be shorter, even though it makes it just a little bit wider. So um, this is the way I'm going to lay out this battery four cells in parallel, and I'm going to continue my series connections going this way. So if I lay out the rest of my cells here, I've got my third group, fourth, fifth, going all the way up through my uh, tenth cell group here. And so this is what my battery is going to look like. Every cell group is alternating between the negative end and the positive end. That way it's easy for me to go back and make my uh, welding connections. I'm going to go ahead and stick my BMS down here. I'll probably put it down at the end here somewhere. Then if I go back and I look at my nickel, I want to start laying down my nickel. Um, and here you can see I've got my parallel nickel connection done. So I'm going to do this on both ends of the cells. This is just a top view, but I'm going to of course weld the parallel cells, uh, the parallel connections on both ends of the cells. And on every parallel group here, they're going to get their uh, parallel nickel connection just like this. So those will be done first, actually, before I put them together in the shape. This gives you the idea of everything is connected in parallel first. 
then I'm going to need to go back and start doing my series connections. So that's where I'll start here with my first series connection, which will actually go from the positive end of the second cell to the negative end of the third cells. I'm not going to do this connection here because this is the negative end of the entire battery. I'm going to continue skipping the uh, 3 to 4 because that's going to be on the other side of the battery and do my next series connection from 4 to 5 and then my next series connection 6 to 7 and then 8 to 9 which 8 to 9 just popped up in kind of a funny place there. It's not where I left that. <laughs> All right. And then you'll notice these gaps here. These are going to be filled in on the other side. So on the other side of the battery, this is on this side we've got the negative one here. On the other side we're going to have positive one and negative two. So that's where those series connections are going to go. And uh, so this is essentially how I lay out my batteries. For me this is just a nice easy way to, to play around with different shapes and configurations on the computer to edit things. And then when I have it the way I like it, I can print it out and then take it to the table and start working. So for you, you can just, you know, you can do this on the computer, you can do it on a piece of paper. Um, I like to scratch out my design sometimes in the beginning before I get to this stage and just create any type of shape, any size, any layout that you want. So that covers the layout of a lithium battery. In the next section, part two, I'm going to show you how to weld your battery. So make sure you stick around for that. Thanks for watching.